Okay, welcome everyone to uh, another uh, random walk down Mill Street. Uh, tonight's topic is, are the Silichot, the morning Silichot uh, in the Spanish Portuguese tradition, uh, and in particular the tradition of New York, of New York, Sharif Israel. Uh, here in New York, we uh, no longer say these every day during Elul and reserve them for the eve of Rosh Hashanah and the eve of Kippur. Uh, but uh, properly, they should be said every day. Uh, during the month of Elul, and they only dropped out because the uh, daily minyan could not be sustained here at Sheretz Israel in the middle of the 19th century. But uh, when you look at the older notes from Zakhrud Alliance and, and before, <clears throat> they do indicate uh, to recite them every day. Uh, but we don't do that uh, today. We only do the uh, uh, evening uh, short form of the city code. And I have often wondered why we don't just uh, take bits and pieces of the uh, Silichot and do them every morning, just, you know, do one, one Silicha, you know, uh, one piyut every morning, uh, just to give a little nod to, to the Silichot. But uh, I'll make that suggestion to the ritual committee, maybe for next year. We'll see. But uh, I thought uh, for those of you who uh, know these melodies, it might be nice to listen to some of them. And for those of you who don't, It'd be even more nice to hear what the Silichot and the Spanish Portuguese tradition are uh, are all about. So we're not going to do the whole thing. We'll just do excerpts. Uh, but that's our topic for this evening. I'm going to share my screen now with you, uh, and uh, we'll get going. So I just want to make sure that you are able to see me and, or, or at least to see the uh, screen. Seeing me depends on how you have set your, your screen up, but uh, you can see on the screen, it says random walk down Mill Street, selection from the city float. Yes, okay, great. Okay, uh, so uh, the uh, starting off point for this evening is that uh, last year, and I may have mentioned this, I don't know, but last year I found something really quite amazing. Uh, and that I had not known about previously. And that was, if you take a look at the top here, this is a screenshot from the National Library of Israel, the Jewish National Library of Israel, Jewish National and University Library of Israel. It's that uh, J-N-U-L, it's uh, abbreviated, located at Hebrew University in Jerusalem, uh, Mount Scopus, I believe. Uh, and it is, uh, you know, the National Library. You know, and every country has one. It's really an incredible resource. And what's really incredible is over the last uh, three, four years, they have been digitizing, 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 and a tremendous amount of material from manuscripts to uh, archival material, pictures, and recordings are available online to anyone in the whole world from wherever you are. And so uh, this amazing resource I've looked at from time to time, almost every holiday, I try to see what they have there get a lot of recordings you listen to here from that website. Uh, and uh, last year I found something quite amazing, and that is a, a recording of the Silly Chot from our synagogue here at Sheretz Israel, uh, as performed by Louis C. Gerstein. That was our minister uh, after Dr. Poole, before Rabbi Angel was Rabbi Gerstein, Dr. Gerstein. Uh, and the recording was made in 1953. Uh, it was done, they call it here haklatat um, functia, functia, which is uh, the Hebrew word for functional. Um, and I don't exactly know what is meant by the record, functional recording. I think it means field recording, but I'm not 100% sure the technical meaning of functional recording. But um, this was done as part of uh, the, uh, the, the Yaakov Mishael collection. I don't know how many of you know who Yaakov Mishael is. Jacob Michael, you might say, if you were speaking American English, although he was European. Jacob Mishael was a fabulously wealthy uh, philanthropist and industrialist uh, who was born in Germany. Uh, I think his, he made his uh, business in selling tungsten, uh, a metal I know nothing about, but it's, which is apparently very essential uh, in manufacturing um, uh, before the war uh, and after the war as well. And then he diversified into many other businesses. But he also became, you know, with, with his success, he became a very a great philanthropist and a collector of Jewish uh, ritual objects, Jewish art. Uh, so you might go to the Jewish Museum or other museums and see it's from the Jacob Mishael collection or it's been donated by Erna and Jacob Mishael. 
But one other aspect that he was really, really heavily involved in, which was the collection of Jewish music. Uh, in the aftermath of the Holocaust, he had a vision that he needed to collect the melodies and traditions of, of Europe, uh, European Jewish liturgy, before they were lost. And so he, he, he went about doing it, and he created an enormous archive of written music, of recorded music, um, which he then donated. I think part of it actually went to JTS, and a large part of it went to the Hebrew University, which is where this recording comes from. And it was made by an ethnomusicologist named Johanna Spector. Uh, I mention all this just because uh, they are interesting people. Jakob Mishael, Johanna Spector, and our own minister, Louis Gerson. And, and the reason I'm telling you this now in the, the get-go is because most of the recordings that we are going to listen to uh, are excerpted from this uh, uh, recording, from this uh, recording from 1953. So what you are hearing is a recording of Dr. Gerstein made in 1953. If you want the link so you can listen to the whole thing on your own, email me and I will gladly send it to you. Um, but you should be aware, and this you should really uh, realize that there is a, I don't know if it's an error on purpose or if it's just the, that they, Hebrew University puts up whatever they have. But the first seven minutes on this recording are something completely different, have nothing to do with the silly chot that it says in the title. But you have to get, once you get to seven, the seventh minute, then it starts. So just be aware of that. We will skip over the seven minutes. <laughs> okay. So, um, if you have a, a, a Rosh Hashanah book or a Silichot book, you might want to take a look at it, although I have the text on the screen here. So Silichot starts in the morning um, with uh, this. Uh oh. Okay. Uh, start with this. Uh, the, it's really a bakasha. We'll say piyut. Ben Adam, Malacha Nir Dam. Son of man, why are you sleeping? Um, Kum ukra betacharunim. Get up and uh, and recite tachanun. <laughs> uh, so that is the uh, opening piyut of the silichot that we say early, early in the morning. Um, and it refers. It's 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 a beautiful piyut, and it's both literal and figurative. You know, literally, you're tired. You need to wake up and arouse yourself from your sleep uh, and get in the right mindset to say silichot. But also figuratively, you know, you gotta. Be in the right mindset to say Salichot. You gotta wake up from your slumber, from your from your sinning ways, or from your backsliding ways, or from your complacent ways, and realize that this is the time of year that we need to improve ourselves and do Tishuva. Uh, and so this uh, this beautiful little uh, poem is what opens the Salichot. Um, interestingly enough, in the London tradition, they don't start with this. This is in Amsterdam and in New York. Uh, they don't start with this uh, in London. Uh, but here we have the report. Oh, oh no, what happened here? Let us, uh, you need to hear it. So let me see what happened to that recording. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay, it was hiding. So now I have to make sure that they're not all hiding. Okay. Yeah, sorry about that. Let's try this again. Okay, there it is. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Oh, dear. 
that is the uh, um, Ben Adam, the beginning and the ending of it anyway. And when this is said in the synagogue, there's something that's very, very nice. Um, uh, and that is, uh, and maybe this is because we don't say it every day during a little when we, go, so we're not have the, we don't have the urge to rush through it. Uh, so when you come to synagogue on the eve of Rosh Hashanah, I think services are at 6 or 6.30, depending on whether it's a Sunday or a weekday. Um, and uh, this is how it starts. And it starts with a congregational singing. But people haven't said it in a long time, since in the year, you know, in the whole year. Uh, and so they start off very softly. The Chazan starts to lead it, and only very softly do people join in. But by the time you get to the end, the whole congregation is singing strong, full voice. So it starts off and very softly. By the time you get to the Chazan, you get the whole congregation singing. It's really a very nice effect that I, I, have, I can't even convey it properly, but come and experience it. It's really pretty great. Um, okay, that's the first, that's what you open with. Uh, then we say a few psalms, and then Ashrei, and the end of Ashrei introduces the Rosh Hashanah theme. And so we'll listen to the Rosh Hashanah theme melody. You will probably recognize it. I've played it before, and you probably know it from the synagogue. <laughs> That's the Rosh Hashanah theme. It goes into a Kaddish, same melody. So we actually call that melody Yidei Rashim, which is one of the psalms, which one of the PU theme from Rosh Hashanah. Yidei Rashim, Nechel Rashim. So that uh, that we say on the morning uh, for Shachrit and on Rosh Hashanah, uh, but that that melody is the theme for all of Rosh Hashanah. So we use that for Kaddish, we use it for Tehillah, and as you will see, that goes right into the beginning of the Sidichot proper. So technically speaking, all we've done so far when we said Ben Adam is a Bakasha, and then we said some Psalms, and we say this Psalm, we say Kaddish, all that is introduction. And now we get to the Sidichot proper, which starts with this uh, with these. These uh, verses, the Cha Adonai Tzedaka, and goes into this uh, call and response, uh, what he calls an antiphonal echo um, of verses and phrases uh, of, of the Selichot. And so we'll listen to that. This is the beginning proper of Selichot. <laughs> So that is sung in so that is sung in unison by the congregation. And then the Chazan continues alone with everywhere you see these two stars is the response by the congregation. So that's what it means by echo antiphonal. Chazan, congregation, chazan, congregation, chazan, congregation. Through the whole thing, we just have an excerpt of it uh, right here. Let me go back just a second. <laughs> And it goes on from there. But that's the, that's the, those are, these are like several different themes. One is the Rosh Hashanah theme. Then we have this Sulicha uh, mode, or at least one of them. Uh, and then we continue. Um, we have uh, then a few Tachanunim, uh, Sulichot, that we say every Monday and Thursday. Uh, I've skipped a few of them, but then we come to this one, uh, which 
When we do it during the Silichot, we say much slower than we do on an ordinary Monday or Thursday from the top of the team. Uh, and uh, no, I did it again, where I don't actually see where I put it. So it's the, uh, oh no, this is, sorry about that, everybody. Have to, just, uh, hope I don't have to do this the whole time. Let's make sure of it. <laughs> Let's make sure of it. Okay. Somehow when I inserted these files, it's set to be hidden during the show, which I need to now undo. Uh, okay. Okay, that should do it. Sorry about that. Let's see, slideshow. And share again. Okay, hopefully, I don't have to do this uh, again, but here now we have. This is, uh, again, this is Al Ta'as Imanu Chala. It's a really beautiful silicha, uh, a uh, 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 uh all about um, uh, crying out to the Lord uh, for uh, his uh, for uh, his mercy and to, uh, to, you know, well, there's a different, there's actually a lot of different lines here. So we'll go through them a little bit, uh, but while we, while we listen to it. Hello. So 
it's actually very similar to some of the other modes, like but it has its own ribbon uh, so we it's really a has a, a plaintive uh quality to it which comes through if you were listening to it and where you hear it most where most people are in the synagogue most people are not in the synagogue for the early morning sleep but where most people are are in the synagogue for it it's not kippur uh when the chazan does the vidoy does the does the chazan's vidoy uh which is really a, a beautiful uh piyut as well and you can hear a same mode na, 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 na. the chazan really confesses um Anyway, the other thing that comes right after this uh, is some of the most famous melodies. And I'm not giving you the most famous melodies. You know, the Chatanu Tzureinu Selach Lanu Yotereinu. We'll do that another time, maybe before Kippur. Or Adonai Melech, Adonai Melech, Adonai Melech, Adonai Melech, Adonai These are melodies that people know, or if you don't know it, we will have opportunity at other times to do it. But they, the Selichot have uh, other, other pieces of that I want to highlight. One of them is this next song, which is next little. It's a tiny little piece, miyuchat, which in the other tradition is not a thing. So I have here. This is Chafon Ben Arosh from London. This is how they sing miyuchat uh, in London. Oh gosh. <laughs> And in Amsterdam also they sort of just they just say it, maybe a little little sing song, a little chanty, but that's it, no special melody. But in New York we have a special melody, really almost lullaby like. Uh, in fact I sing this to my children at night sometimes as part of their bedtime routine um uh, because i think it, it is a very lullaby-esque melody so you'll 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 tell me some most of you may have heard it if you're old timers in the synagogue you may have heard it before some of you might be new <laughs> This is read first by the Chazan alone, and I always have to uh, sort of shush people because they don't realize that that's a Chazan solo. And then it's repeated by the Kahal. So you get it twice. Uh, and in the, on Kippur, when it's done in the Sadiqot on Kippur, it's done by the Chazan and then the, the, the choir sings. And there is a really nice recording of Dr. Poole singing it as well. Uh, I just so here you have Dr. Gerstein, Dr. Gerstein and uh, Dr. Poole. Uh, both very beautiful, beautiful melody. Only known here in New York, as far as I know. Uh, they also sing it in Philadelphia, but I think that's because the Chazan in Philadelphia is trained in New York. I don't think it was original there. I think it was originally a New York melody. Don't have any way to prove it, though. Uh, but here we go. If anyone here knows the origin of that melody, please let me know. <laughs> uh, and now we get to the last thing we're going to do tonight, which is a really, really beautiful slicha. Um, it even says slicha here. Uh, and the author of this salicha is Moshe ibn Ezra, Moses ibn Ezra, uh, who is not the commentator on the Torah, that's Abraham ibn Ezra. But Moses ibn Ezra is pretty famous in his own right, for a lot of reasons. A little bit of a philosopher, uh, but mainly he is known as a person who wrote a few team, especially salichot. So a lot of the salichot we say on Rosh Hashanah and Kippur are written by Moses ibn Ezra. He lived. Uh, Pretty early, I think uh, 12th century, maybe, if I'm not mistaken, uh, maybe even a little earlier. Um, and he uh, he was an in incredibly famous poet. I don't only mean if we're Jewish. In fact, he's I think he's mainly known outside of the Jewish liturgical world as a, one of the you know influential, very influential Spanish 
Arabic poets. Uh, he had, uh, you know, a, a real influence on the way Arabic poetry and songs were written, on the types of meter and the how they're supposed to go. Uh, and he has a particular style, which you will see a little bit of here. One of the things that our melody, uh, well, let's listen to it first, and then we'll talk a little bit about some of the peculiarities of it. So this is Ana Kingab Zedoni Timchehu. Ana Kingab Zedoni Timchehu. Vesalach Talanaboni Kirabu. Echimachev Nirtahab Lemolabi. Ki en belibo machshahab.
that that's what I want to say. So it's very straight. Bum 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 bum. And our um uh, our melody is similar in that kind of structure, except at one point where we repeat. So um so we have uh well, we can actually listen to the beginning again. So. because it interrupts the flow of the words uh, kind of improperly. Ki um, ha for the writing, mechtav Elohim hu, it's the writing of God. These two words should go together. Mechtav Elohim hu. It's not ki ha mechtav mechtav, ki ha mechtav mechtav, Elohim hu. It's not the writing is written, the writing is written, he is the Lord. That's, uh, that's, not, that's not, at least that's not the way it makes sense. Um, but that is the way we sing it, and that, and you know, God help the person who sings it differently. Um, that is the way it's supposed to be sung. That's the melody. But now I want you to listen. So the last thing we're going to listen to is the same one as sung in the tradition of Florence. So which Florence is a Western Sephardic community. Um, it's it's not exactly the same melody, but you will hear the similarities very clearly, and the differences. Let's see if this will cooperate. Anak <laughs> Not perfect, but not the worst of them. Um, 
here. No sing avon vechanon, no sing avon vechanon, verachom ho, verachom ho. Again, this one, it really should be no sing avon vechanon verachom ho. But okay, that's not, not so terrible to break that one up. Um, uh, but here's the word. Va'omar lo uchalki. That's what we be singing. Va'omar lo uchalki chatum hu chatum hu. And we do that because the meter that Moses Ibn Ezra wrote had these two words always at the end. Chatum hu, bino tu, Elohim hu. But this ki is just lying there. It should be ki chatum hu. It's not, you know, but that's just the way that the, the meter has broken it up. And Sherat Israel's tradition, as well as most of the other Western Sephardic uh, traditions, incorporates that into the music, even though it breaks up the phrasing of the of the language. So that's that's what I have for you. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you come to hear us uh, sing uh, the Yisraelichot, and you can come sing with us uh, on uh, on the eve of Rosh Hashanah, the eve of Kippur. Uh, let me uh, end the recording here.